All right, so after a ton of searching, I finally found a room in like a like low-key classroom, and uh, I think we'll do the video here. The board's a little kind of like not pure white. Like this side's kind of like dirty. Um, but yeah, we're about to clean the room so we can do the video. Oh, what you mean? Yeah. And then you'll need to adjust to that. Wait, can you stand there real quick? Yeah. Can you still get me if I'm like... Oh, this is good, yeah. Like this? Yeah, the zoom in is actually better. All right. Wait, hold on, let me focus. Is it going? Yeah. It's going. All right. All right, guys, so today we're going to be doing the N Queens placement problem. Um, this is a very famous backtracking problem, and it's a problem that I struggled, struggled with. It took me three or four months to really grasp and understand the idea of backtracking because I had like weak roots in recursion and things like that. But my goal today is to make this problem very clear and the solution and how to come about this solution very clear and adapting the solution for other backtracking problems clear. So what is backtracking? Backtracking is a method of solving problems where we make a series of choices that we can return or backtrack to. So that's where the term backtracking comes from. So an example is when you lose your keys, how do you find them? Like what do you do? Your brain thinks back to where you were, to where your keys were at previous points in time. So you say, maybe I left them in the garage and then maybe I left them in the room. And then when you're in the room, you say, no, I don't need to keep going back. Let me go forward. Let me go downstairs to the kitchen. So these are each decision points. And at each decision point, you have a range of possibilities that you can explore from there until you find your goal, which is finding the key. Ultimately, that's your goal. So where does the memory come from? Where does this remembrance come from? In, in your functions. So it comes from the call stack where we call functions and we remember the state of each function call. So the call stack remembers our choices and it knows what to choose next. Every call of the function represents a new decision. So with these in mind, let's introduce the problem. So the problem is given an n by n chessboard, meaning it's a square chessboard, how do we place n queens in the respective rows, or you can do it this way, columns, in, in the, how do we place the queens in the columns so that the queens are not attacking each other? So in chess, a queen is attacking another queen if it's on the diagonal of, of the placement or below the placement or across. So as you can see here, if we place a queen here, we cannot place a queen across from it or below it or on the diagonal. So the next queen has to be there. For this one, if we place the queen here, then we can't place the queen across from it, we can't place down, we can't place diagonal. And then if we place it here, you can see you're getting the point now, you can't place down, can't place this way, can't place this way. So this seems like a very complicated problem. How would your code possibly understand how to do this? Whenever you have something that represents many decision points, that's when you know backtracking is the tool you need to be using. All right, so to keep everything simple, whenever we have a backtracking problem or even general recursive problem, there's three key things we need to be thinking about when we're solving this whole backtracking thing. So the first thing is what choices are we making? What is our choice? So what choice do we make at each call of the function? Recursion expresses a decision, whether we're traversing a binary tree, whether we're going and traversing a linked list recursively, in a binary tree, at each point, each function call is deciding to go to the left or to the right. So recursion represents decisions and our decisions are remembered on the call stack. So second, we need to think about what are the constraints of this problem? When do we stop following a certain path or when do we not even try to follow a path? When do we just say that's not a path that's going to produce a valid answer and lead me to my final thing? my goal. What is our goal? What is our target? What are we trying to find? Are we trying to find an answer that is 10 characters long? Are we trying to find n queens? What are we trying to find? And what we're trying to find ends up defining our base case. We're going to see in our code that this goal, our goal defines when our recursion stops. When we say we have an answer, let's add this to our result and return back to a previous position and keep searching. So these are the three keys. So how do these play into the problem? 
So first off, our choice. Our choice is going to be what column do we place our queen in at every row. Every row we're going to make a choice. We're going to have to choose which column do we place a queen in. Our constraints are going to be, we can't place a queen right below another queen. We can't place it diagonal. We can't place it across. Those are our constraints. And then finally, our goal is to find n placements. When we've placed n columns, when we have n columns of queens placed, that is when we know we're finished. We're finished with our recursion and we can backtrack to the most recent spot and then we can keep exploring or we're just finished if we just backtrack all the way upwards. Filming, <clears throat> zooming in. Wait, let me, let me think for a sec. Is it gone? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Okay. All right, so getting into the functions that we're going to use, we have three specific little functions we're going to look at. The main driver of this, the helper that's going to check if our placement is valid, and then our actual code where I'm going to get into all that. So first off, we get our parameter n. n queens we get n. If we have four, it's a four by four chessboard. So for example, if n is four, or one of these answers would look like this, and then another answer would look like this. This answer would be found before this answer because this is placement in column two, this is placement in column three. We would, pass, we would explore this first, but anyway. So we get n. It tells us the dimensions of our chessboard. So we create an, a result array list, and then we call our recursive function with n and with our result array list that we're going to add our answers to, and then we just return that array list. This is just our driver function, does not do anything important. So moving on, we come to our solving function. This is the function where we make decisions and we solve the n queens problem for every iterative step or every row number. So every call of the function is going to have the dimension of the chessboard, the current row we are solving for, the current placements of queens in their columns in an array we keep. So if our array has zero, one, so that means we had a placement in column zero, and then we had a placement in column one. And the index of that number in the array tells us what row number we placed that column in. So what is our goal? So we define our goal before. So whenever you're writing recursive backtracking functions, it all comes back to our base cases and our goal. And we can define that as soon as we start. If when the row equals n, when we have solved the problem for n rows, we are finished. Whatever column placements we have in our column placement array can be added to the answer. We're done. At that point, we can return to whatever function called us and then we're finished if we're done, right? So if rows, if the row number does not equal n, so say if row equals three and n is a four by four chessboard, four, we have one more to place. We're not finished. We need to make choices. So what is this for loop? This for loop represents our choices. We're going to choose from column zero to column n minus one. So we're going to be, we're going to make this many choices, and that's what this for loop represents. We're only going to go up to this point because look at our chessboard. We're, when, once we place this, we're going to try placements in each column going this way. So not all of those will be valid. So what, what is our next thing we talked about? So this is our choice. Our choice is choosing a placement. So we place a, we place, um, a column into our column placements array. We, we're, we choose a placement. This is our choice. This is our choice. And then after we choose, we need to say, is this a valid choice? Do I say, okay, let me call the function again. I'm finished. Uh, this is a valid choice. Let's explore this path. This is where our constraints come into play. This is our constraints. So we call our helper is valid, which we'll look at in a second with our column placements. We just place the column and we need to inspect is this placement okay? Is this a valid placement? Do I keep exploring? Do I call the function again and solve for the next row and then the next row and then the next row until it's finished? So if it is a valid placement, we increment row by one. So if row is zero in this current function, and then we say, I've solved row zero, go to row one, go to row two, go to row three. So this says, go to the next row and solve for that and then get back to me on your answer. Well, 
this function doesn't return anything, but it's going to add it to the result array that gets returned. So that's basically that. And then after we're finished, after this does its exploring, so say I choose one, say, say I choose make a choice for row zero, I say go and make your choices. It'll make its choices for row one, two, 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 three, four, whatever, and then it'll come back to row zero, and then after we, after we made a choice on row zero, we need to remove our choice. So this is a common pattern you'll see in backtracking problems like permutations of a string, subsets. We make a choice, we explore, and then we undo our choice. We make a choice, explore, undo our choice. Choose, explore, unchoose. Choose, explore, unchoose. This is a very common pattern in backtracking and it's the pattern you're going to follow. So then we undo our choice, we remove the last placement from our column placements array. So if we just place, if we made a placement for row zero and row one, we'd remove our placement for row one and we would be back at row zero and then we'd make our next choice because our for loop would continue in that stack frame. It would continue in that stack frame and then we would place, validate, undo and then we would keep doing our exploring so each of these calls to this function represent a choice and that choice we have a choice it has constraints and then once it's done exploring it undoes that choice so all it does is once you understand these fundamentals understand what's going on fundamentally once you, you can start to visualize the way the stack frames are going to call each other return to each other and it starts making sense as long as you define a correct policy in each each call of the function you can tr people say this a lot you can trust the recursion to do its job you can trust this function to make decisions based on the way that it's defined so that basically explains this and then we can just go to our isValid function. This simply um, sees our column placement size. So if, we've, if we have placed two items, then we know that we are currently at um, row ID 1. We're validating on row ID 1 because the size would be 2, 2 minus 1, 1. And then this just goes through each of the rows. It does a little math, it gets the difference, and sees if we're on a diagonal or if we are below or to the right of a placement that already exists. And if that's true, then we are going to say this is invalid, return false. Otherwise, if it passes this inspection, we return true. This, this function is just a helper. You can look at this and like do the math in your head and make sure it's right. But what you really need to understand is the key. Define your goal. What is your goal in your backtracking? That is step one. What choice are you going to make? This for loop represents the choices. What choice am I going to make? And how many choices do I need to make per function call? What are our constraints? When do I not explore a path? And then finally undo your choice. Once you're finished with a choice, undo it. So this is a common pattern you're going to see traversing trees recursively, um, doing other backtracking problems like string permutations, um, because for permutations, you place an item, explore with the rest of the characters that haven't been placed. Um, I'm going to do a video on that as well. But this is basically it. This is the end queen's problem. You can come down. You can just walk. Walk down. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, God. Did you almost fall? I stepped back, and I stepped on the back of this. Oh, oh my God. Mm -hmm. That's scary. We're good. We're good. Okay. We're still filming. So this is the end queen's placement problem. It's all about the three keys we talked about. Make a choice, know your constraints, and know your goal. Know what the recursion is going towards. Every call of the function needs to be making more progress, a little more progress to that base case, which is your answer. So that is basically the end queen's problem. Um, it's a leak code hard, but if you really understand what's going on, the concepts aren't too bad. Um, but it did take me like a month to understand this. So. Yeah, that's that. We're done. Shining. Oh, zoom in, you smart. Yeah, boy. All right.